Hey Interwebs, my name is Mort and I'm here to teach you the very basics of Flash. Alright, so before I start I want you to be aware of that I'm not from an English speaking country. So if I pronounce stuff kind of weird or my sentence is kind of goofy, well you know why. And um, with that said, let's get started. Alright, so what kind of tools is Flash? Because it's kind of a unique tool and it's being used for a whole lot of different things such as animations, web games, uh, vector art and a whole lot more like um, uh, interactive website for example. So Flash is kind of a unique tool and it's really being used for a whole lot of different things. But in this tutorial I'll be focused mostly on the art aspect of it and animation. So with that said, let's move on. Alright, so let's set up the interface. Your interface probably look different from mine and uh, we want to change that. So what I want you to do is to go up here to the right corner and you'll see a little button here. It probably says something different in your version of Flash. If you click that you'll get a whole lot different settings you can choose and I want you to choose this small screen and after doing that your interface should be looking something like this. So why the small screen layout? Well it's the most simple layout there is and there's not a whole lot going on and it's just very simple and nice and not being too confusing. Also it's the interface that has the most space and we'd like to have a lot of space to be working on of course. And it just have the tools you really need. Like there's not a whole lot of things going on here that we won't be using in the future. And it's the interface I use so you'll have a easy time following up on my tutorials when uh, when we'll be doing those. Alright, so next thing is the basic tools. Well, over here to the left you can see all the basic tools you have and uh, I'll talk a bit about what tools we'll be using. So the first tool I want to cover is the brush. You can get the brush by either pressing B or you can select it off here to the left by pressing the brush tool. <laughs> if you press the brush tool you'll see there come some settings down here you can play around with. Um, there's not a whole lot you can do with the brush in, uh, in Flash, it's not like Photoshop where you can change into different brushes or anything, but you have a bit of settings you can play around with. So you can either change the brush size, you can decide if you want pressure sensitivity or not. So if I don't have pressure sensitivity it looks like this symbol thing here, and if I push the pressure sensitivity I can make a slim and then make it a thick line. So I press harder on my tablet. And the last thing I can choose here is the brush shape and it really just changes what kind of shape the brush has. So you have a bit of settings, it's, it's kind of like paint I guess. You don't have a whole lot of things you can do but there's a few basic things you can change about it um, which will turn into neat stuff in the future if you are good at using it and being super awesome brush master in flash I don't know all right so with that said let's move on so of course when you have a brush you should also have an eraser you can um, select the eraser by either pressing E as it shows here we E or you can go up here and you'll see there's a little eraser so let's just press E because I want you to get used to the short keys so press E, e. Alright, so when you press E, like with the brush, there was a few settings down here that changed. Uh, one of them is just being the brush size and shape. So next up, I have the selection tool. Um, before I select the selection tool, I want to make a little circle here and a square. Alright, so you can select the selection tool by pressing B. Yeah, short keys. Or you can go up here to the left where you see the selection tool as well. There is another selection tool that looks similar but we won't be covering that because it's not really necessary and useful as you will be using this most of the time. So the selection tool is basically just a tool that can select stuff <laughs> and you can select stuff by just clicking on it and when you click it you can see all these tiny dots appear within the thing we had selected. You can also use the selection tool to kind of drag lines like this to make things differently. I don't know how you want to explain that but you can make stuff uh, yeah so that's a thing you can do but one thing about the selection tool is that these two objects here are obvious different objects but they have the same color so if I drag this object over the other one deselect it and then uh, select it again it will select the whole thing because those two objects have now merged into one thing so you sometimes have to be careful and if you can you, you can use something called symbol which I will talk about later in the video. So that was the selection tool, there's not much other to that. The paint bucket. 
that's a very useful tool, right? You kind of need to look at it like it's paint, but a bit more advanced. So again, I want to select my brush to draw a little thing we can play around with here. By selecting the paint bucket, you click either the K button, or you go over here, or you press the you don't click the K button, you press the K button, or you can go over here to the left where you can select the paint bucket as well. Um, and yeah, a paint bucket. What is that? Well, it usually fills out stuff. So when you click within a spot, it fills it out. But there are some neat settings you can do with the paint bucket. So let me switch over to my brush here and make another circle. But as you can see, this circle is not complete. And sometimes when you draw in flash, you end up doing stuff like, I don't know what I'm drawing right now, but you can see some of these spots, they don't touch each other. So if I were to use the paint bucket, it, it wouldn't fill it out. But now I want to talk about a little cool thing you can do with the paint bucket. So if you go over here, there's something called gap size. When you click on gap size, you can decide how big the gap should be before it doesn't detect it as a gap. So let's take this small gap here and it should probably fill out. No, it doesn't fill out here, but I'm pretty sure it will here. Yeah. So there was a few small gaps here. It ignored because I select the gap size to be... Um, small but you can go into a medium and it will of course select bigger gaps and you can even go into larger gaps yeah it's a bucket I fill out stuff <laughs> so I'm gonna select these by pressing B to get my selection tool and if I hold shift at the same time you can select more stuff that's a little bonus tip for you there all right so next up we have the zoom tool um, it's a very basic thing you use it for zooming so let's say I draw a ball here and I draw another ball Ooh. and I want to make some um, eyes in here crazy eyes I don't know yeah let's make a crazy eye so I make this and I make a whole thing here but I want it to have a little dot in here which I seem to have a hard time getting so I can now press this um, magnifying glass here or I can press C to get my zoom zoom tool and uh, over here to the left like before the zoom tool changes so I can now zoom in or I can zoom out. You can also, while you have the zoom tool, you can hold uh, command or control, oh, sorry, alt, and it will change this to the other tool. So let's say I have the zoom in tool selected and I hold alt, it will change it to the zoom out as long as I hold alt. Um, but I want to make this little ball in here so it looks crazy. And if you want to zoom out to normal, you can hold command or uh, control one and it will zoom out to the normal size. And the last thing I want to talk about is the eye drop tool. So let's say I have a red color here and I draw a bit of red over here and some red here. And now I want to use the black color, but I don't want to go over here, select it and change it to black to draw. I just want to kind of work around things very quickly. Then I can press the I, or I can go over to the eyedropper tool, but I want you to press I because it's way cooler to use shortcuts and it's way more efficient. So you press I and you get the eyedropper tool, you select it, boom. But after using the eyedropper tool, you for some reason automatically get the bucket and you there if that has to press B to get the brush out again. I hope that makes sense. So next up, shortcuts. It would be so nice for you to remember shortcuts because it will just make everything way more faster for you. Alright, so layers. Layers function very differently in Flash and I want to cover that. So the way layers function in Flash is that you have something called a timeline down here. Um, and that is basically your layers. As you can see right now I have a few things going on in this tutorial. But I want to draw, um, I don't know, another face behind this. So what I do is I make a new layer here. And now I have a layer on top of it, but I can move it down as well. So I'm drawing on a layer behind where the face is now, and I can draw here. And I make another face. And that's how layers basically function in Flash. It's your timeline tool. All right, next up, symbols. Symbols is a kind of way to use layers as well. It's kind of weird because symbol is kind of things put together in a object but you also have layers with in the symbols and outside the symbols so I want to see if I can cut this down to a very basic thing if you press 8 right now nothing happens but if I draw a face again here 
when you have uh, made this thing you want to make it into a symbol but you don't just press F8 right now. You want to select a thing first and whatever you have selected and press 8 at the same time will open us the window and change it into a symbol. So there is a lot of things going on here. You can name your symbols if you want to. Um, I'm gonna make, name this one um, face. So now I have a face symbol here and I can move that around. It doesn't interact the same way it did before. But if I double click on the face or the symbol, I, it will get its own layers down here and I can make more layers within the symbol. So that way I can again draw behind and make more stuff. I don't know why he has red faces around him. If I get my selection tool and double tap away from all my objects here, I will now have um, my object here and I can move around it and uh, like before still make new layers outside the symbol and draw. But at the same time I can double tap and make new layers within the symbol so I can really just make a thousand layers. So I want to get rid of this dude now. But that's basic symbols. Properties. The settings for pretty much everything in Flash and that was a bit of a godfather shake I did there with my hand. When you use these properties, um, it will basically be the settings for everything in Flash and you see the properties button up here. So now I've selected the uh, brush tool and if I press the properties button, I will get some uh, settings here for the brush. So if you have a symbol like before, um, let's make a new symbol here, we again select it all. And uh, I made a quick symbol there. I didn't call it anything. It was just my blue blob. So I have now selected that. And again, I can go into properties. And I can in here, I can do like filters. I can, you know, put a blending mode on. I can put an alpha channel. It's kind of advanced, but you know, I'll uh, talk a bit about it anyway. And yeah, the properties is just basically setting for everything in Flash. Next up, colors. So. Where are your colors in Flash? I don't see cool Photoshop sliding things around. No, it's because Flash, again, is another kind of tool and it functions differently. You might have noticed when I used the brush, I actually changed the bucket's uh, color because this uh, pin here is a whole different drawing tool, which I will be covering in the future as well. But this bucket here is your brush tool's color. Kind of weird, but it is. You can also go up here, you see a color palette, where you can change up colors as well if you want to go more in depth with colors. You can change the hue, you can change the uh, saturation, and you also have your preset colors here you can change between. So I just want to use black for now because I'm not a rainbow guy, sorry. Yeah, I'm not the rainbow guy. I wish it were. Anyway. One of the last thing I want to cover is the library. So what is a library? That's not something I've used in, I don't know, Paint, and Photoshop, and Design, and Gimp, and whatever all these tools are. Well, a library is the way Flash save your symbols. So early on we made some symbols, and those symbols are in here in our library. So we have the blue blob I made, and we have the face which turned into a guy with a red body outline, which is kind of weird. So you can always go back here if you accidentally uh, delete one of your symbols and drag it out again. One thing I didn't mention about symbols, you can actually also have symbols within symbols. So this face within the face symbol, I can call the real face. Uh, and uh, I can move it up like it's a symbol. And as you can see here, I have two of the same symbols out. So whatever I do to one of the symbols will happen to the other symbol as well. You can use that for a lot of uh, cool stuff if you need to edit one thing, but that one thing will be like 10 times around the picture somewhere, I don't know. Like if we need it to have three of these guys, but I decided I actually wanted them all to have a black outline. So you can do that and when you go back out, they will all have a black outline. But that's basically library. It stores all your symbols and if you import any files like a photo or sound file or I don't know anything to flash it will all end up in here in your library <clears throat> so the last thing I want to talk about is really how you save the drawings in flash because it doesn't function like, like Photoshop or paint you don't just press save when you do that you save a flash file which is the main source file so what you do is you go up here in your left corner and you click files then you click export and then you click export 
and you'll get this menu up here. When I press save, you get this menu, menu, menu. Not a menu with a lot of food on, but a menu with a lot of options on. And then I just export it out. So that's the basic of Flash. Thanks a lot for watching my video. If you liked what you saw, hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe if you want to see more. And always leave a comment if you have any questions. More signing out.